So infrastructure, very, very easy. So when you're looking at infrastructure investments, what are the different categories or kinds of investments we could be looking at? So one is when people invest or when companies invest into transportation, ports, airports, uh, railways also now that we have the private uh, sector entry. So we've got a Dani group. I cannot think of anything else in the transportation port airport segment. When you're looking at utility, electricity, gas provision and all, ideally these things would have to be done by government. But again, investments from private sector involve, uh, in, invites a lot of efficiency. But the point is that it needs to be regulated properly. So even when you're looking at the uh, utility, electricity and gas, you cannot be exorbitantly charging the public. And it cannot be so low as well that Ultimately, the companies do not want to enter or they provide very bad service. The idea or the objective is that there should be least amount of leakage. Like in electricity, again, the cost and all is quite high at times because the recovery rate is very poor and in distribution, a lot of electricity is uh, is stolen literally. So the stealing of this and, and they have, I mean, it's, it's a very bad uh, entire scenario. I don't even want to get into the discussion of it. But um, at times, stealing of electricity and all of these things are allowed for campaigning and election purposes and all. So that becomes quite quite in, uh, unfair to people who are actually, you know, paying for the electricity bills and they could have afforded it or gotten uh, access to electricity and all at a cheaper cost. And it is it took almost God knows how many years, 70 plus years for entire country to be, uh, you know, um, get electricity and all of that in you know, every corner. Um, <clears throat> and... Well, these are the things we are discussing after these many years of independence. It's so sad. But thankfully now, at least uh, the entire country has got access to electricity and all. And even now everybody does not have access to, they did not have access to toilets. I'm hoping that everybody now does. And now hopefully we will have access to tap water and all. So that is also very important. These are the most basic necessities. I mean, it is so bad when, when you know, you cannot have access to these basics. I mean, these very, very basics. I mean, it's not even luxury. <coughs> Anyways, gas again, when you're looking at from US and colder countries perspective, they need providing of gas, gas pipelines and all are there because they need to heat the environment. So those utilities are there. Distribution channels, waste disposal, etc. There are companies who are entering into the recycling business now. So waste disposal and all. There could be infrastructure investments uh, into the telecom sector. We are seeing that telecom prices, the uh, prices and all for your mobile bills and all data network, etc. has gone up. But again, the quality has also gone up. If you compare to what BSNL we used to pay and what we are get, what speed we used to get. And today what you're getting the amount of quantity of data that you're getting amount of data that you're getting and the kind of prices and in india the prices are still very exorbitantly low as compared to uk us etc because again the same infrastructure is used to service larger audience so because of the population the cost per person comes down significantly right so that is your communications and all in social i don't know if you people have gone through this uh, prison break uh, series i don't know if you people had seen that that i don't remember because i'd seen the first uh, I think I saw the, f the first season and then I just left that. Um, some people really like that, but I, I did not enjoy that much. But the idea was that there are proper corporates who enter into this because there aren't enough facilities in order to keep the prisoners in the prison. And uh, because of that, you needed private investment to come into it because of safety standards, etc. and everything. And per prisoner, the corporate will get paid and obviously the government will have regulations and everything around it you cannot imprison anybody it's just that you're providing a service and make uh, doing that investment in order to have a prison infrastructure so these things i think this it will it will just take some time where india also has a prison infrastructure in place even when you're looking at ayushman bharat scheme it's not that only government hospitals can apply <coughs> sorry private hospitals and all could get themselves empaneled and they could also be a part of the Ayushman Bharat scheme where the government is providing insurance 5 lakh rupees to 50 crore plus family uh, uh, people and all. So in that case again that interest the investment in hospital in, uh, infrastructure is being done in the country ultimately. Right. So there are a lot of ways in which you can invest into infrastructure and it need not be always private uh, public owned as in government owned. And there are ways of capitalizing and earning money from infrastructure, ports, airports, etc. These are public utilities. We are the ones who are going to use it. But ultimately, a private company could be owning it, running it very efficiently and make money out of it. So these are the different kinds of infrastructure investments. There's another way of calculating. So this was just a basic idea of what infrastructure is, not even proper categorization and all. Now, when you're looking at categorizing infrastructure, we can look at, look at it from either brownfield or greenfield investments. This is important. You need to know the terms. When you're looking at brownfield investment, brown and green. After you have cleared all the grass, vegetation, etc., what is the color? Brown. 
learn it that way. So after the construction is done, we call it a brownfield investment. Before a construction is done, we are calling it greenfield investment. Maybe you're just absolutely buying a barren land or something over here. Brownfield investment is where you are already investing into an already constructed property. So you've already got a flyover constructed or a highway constructed or something and you're investing into that. Greenfield investment is where you'll buy the land and then you'll work on it and get the construction etc done. Obviously, if it's a brownfield project, the construction is already done. There is barely any gestation period or something. Gestation period is when you invest and want to start the work and when actually the business starts running. So you cannot have uh, decide that I'll have a factory today and then tomorrow the factory starts running. It takes a couple of years to build and to get the project running up and running. So obviously in a brownfield investment project, because the investment is already, uh, uh, the construction is already done, you will have stable cash flows. It's already generating cash flows, highway, toll, airport, whatever. And already, so if you are buying an existing airport that Adani bought or compare it with a airport that is being constructed, which Adani, GMR, Infra, etc. got in together and then they are constructing. So they are going to be two different cases altogether. One is a brownfield, which is already constructed. It's generating stable cash flows. It will have a good yield because you're investing in heavily such kind of an asset. Good yield in the sense that in terms of regular yield, recurring yield, because it's already up and running. The growth rate is going to be low. The growth rate is going to be low because it's already constructed. But in case of a greenfield investment, what happens is it's not yet constructed. Obviously, it's more risky. If it is more risky, you will be able to get, you will be able to generate a much higher growth rate. For example, an existing airport is going to continue more or less at a regular capacity. The airport is already constructed, but when you're making something new, the growth rate will be very high. Even the Noida airport, the JR airport is going to be constructed in phases and the capacity is going to be increasing and, and it's obviously going to take some time but the growth rate becomes very high. Immediately people will not shift from using Delhi airport to Jawad, but people from Noida, the Noida offices will come up, the city limit is going to expand and everything. Of course there will be high growth rate, otherwise what's the point of investing into a more risky one? There's more uncertainty, the construction is also yours. Low yield in the form of recurring cash flow, regular cash flow at the beginning could be lower. It could be great also but then again the risk is high. It has to be constructed. Obviously, whenever something is constructed newly, um, <clears throat> the advantages are also there. For example, if, an, if somebody is going to be constructing the airports today, they'll have all the biometric everything in place. And maybe with less operational issues, the entire work could be done. Like if you compare very old airport, they will not have access to getting into an aircraft uh, directly. You'll have to use a bus. But maybe the way you can construct airports nowadays, you'll have direct access to the to enter the aircrafts and all the way they have now started making those spike kind of designs where you know there is a spike and then you have multiple flights over here then multiple flights over here that Jumeirah Palm Jumeirah Island kind of a shape uh -huh. so they're having those kind of shapes and those kind of things so now when you plan the architecture the layout and everything of the airport you can actually make it very very less operationally uh, inefficient like Bangalore airport they were saying that they'll have some kind of scheme systems and all like simple example I'll give you printing your boarding pass directly just going for your package drop actually reduces the amount of time that it takes on the counter you're able to the same airport infrastructure is able to service more number of people today <clears throat> you understanding then um, so even with your QR code scanner nowadays you don't even have to get that your print out the boarding pass is also going to work up to the end if you do not have so yeah automate so a lot of ways like automation is one but if you're constructing totally that spike method i told you so that has to be done uh, absolutely from scratch so there is possibility of high growth and all for new investments new infrastructure investments and all now when you're making investment into infrastructure it could be in different ways one you might want to construct the property greenfield kind of an investment where you are going to be constructing let's say the flyover airport whatever so it is possible that the government, with the government or, you know, you got into a project where I'm going to construct the highway or I'm going to construct the flyover and then I'm selling it. So I will do the construction, then I will give the flyover to the government, I'll get the money. So that is a selling, constructing and leasing. So say for example, I construct a highway and I lease it out to the government for 40 years and the government is going to be paying me an X amount of money on an annual basis for the next 40 years. So I'm making a construction now, but I'm going to get money over 40 years. The government also will not have to spend that kind of money immediately in one budget. So governments also, they will, instead of, you know, investing 100 crore in one flyover, let's say I'll do 100, I'll do 100 crore in 10 flyovers and pay 10 crore each every year. So they will be able to expand faster, private equity also. Then if there are 10 flyovers, 
so much of construction activity public expenditure expenditure is increasing multiplier effect is going to come in so again think of economics and all of that right but then your debt level is high i mean because you have future obligations so you cannot just take future obligations without being confident that you'll be able to pay for those those leases and all but then these uh, construct and then you can lease it to the government it is also possible that the government allow you that you construct you operate the airport you earn money for 30 years after 30 years it is owned by the government <clears throat> so you can directly operate the asset as well port airports etc are very important assets especially when it comes to national security and all so even when you're looking at the string of pearls and you know sri lanka port being bangladesh china constructing ports surrounding india from all the sides and all so these are very very uh, uh, very important aspects to consider and sri lanka actually needs to be very careful now about the way things are even with its struggling economy and all and when the port and the kind of control china is having so you always have to have control even if somebody a private player is constructing assets for you the control has to always be with you control in the sense in terms of regulation and all so the airport authority ai is going to be controlling the you know the rules regulation the price regulation all those those aspects have to be clear but you cannot say that you know i will clear i will keep all the aspects in my favor and i will give nothing to the businessmen then business people will not enter you will ultimately have no infrastructure investments and all and if you go back on your words vodafone tax case ultimately it was a loophole that some uh, that vodafone tried to uh, capitalize on although it was again there are different ways of looking at it but you cannot retrospectively change laws and ask for taxation and all that you cannot do that because that gives a very negative sentiment for, to the investors ultimately you'll have to make sure that investments are flowing in and the economy is doing well next you could be purchasing an existing asset this is when the government wants to monetize its assets so the government the existing asset the government is going to sell suppose i sell an asset of 100 crore rupees the government gets immediately 100 crore rupees and then you lease it back to the government itself and you will keep on getting 5 crore for the next 30 years so you you are basically this is nothing but a financial investment that i'm giving you 100 crore rupees and i'm getting 5 crore per annum up to 30 years obviously 5% may not be very good enough but then there are infrastructure bonds and all which have tax uh, exemptions and all available so it is possible that certain individuals funds etc might want to capitalize on that so we have infrastructure bonds and all these that the government issues so maybe we are going to be using that so one way of investment could be through those bonds and all wherein you're investing the money purchasing an existing asset and then leasing it back to the government basically it's like buying a bond or something right or it could be directly operate you purchase the asset from the government airport is already there i'll purchase it i will run for 20 30 years i will be more efficient you give it to me let me run let businessmen do the business you do the government governance at least you please make sure that your law order people listen to the policemen people are scared of police nowadays okay so <clears throat> whatever so at least you know you take care of things your your law order judiciary you take care of these aspects right the social aspects schools i mean i i i sincerely believe that you know schools should be schools are way more important than college that is what i think in terms of in terms of grooming in terms of you know all of that so it's very important that schools are very good in term by the government make the kids so good and employable and everything that later on you don't have to give these rozgar yojanas and all and even if you give rozgar yojana please make them work and don't give them for free and have labor issues in your country anyway so directly operate so that is also a possibility and you can have your public private partnership and all singapore follows that model where the government and the private is coming into partnership in order to uh, construct infrastructure projects and all another way of categorization could be based on geography so uh, you can you can have offshore onshore assets you can have north india south india you can do the assets classification a lot of ways so these are your infrastructure classification now what are the characteristics when i'm looking at investing into infrastructure one is the investment time frame is going to be very very long term very 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 long term rather <clears throat> when you are investing into an airport or something you will not sell and lease back for 2 years or 5 years or 10 years it's actually going to be most likely even more than 10 years so what kind of investors will it attract so when you are looking at life insurance companies now i if i have taken life insurance i don't have an lic if i if i know correctly i have uh, if i take a life insurance obviously average expected life is going to be that at least i'm going to live for another 30 years or so you're going to be pay, paying premium most people will be paying premium for 25 30 years LIC has to invest for 25 years your premium amount so LIC is a very long term investor LIC will not keep the money at their uh, in in their bank account right 
they'll have to earn returns so that once you're dead or you're not dead and the uh, policy matures they're able to provide that bulk amount with returns so LICs, pension funds, pension funds will start paying you. You will contribute right now, but they will start paying you once you've retired. So when you're looking at pension funds, LICs and all, they might want to invest in these kind of assets, which are very, very long term in nature. So you'll have to understand what kind of investors would want to invest in these assets. Understanding the idea. So that is your long life, large scale and cost. Now, obviously, these investments are going to be very, very large scale. Airport and all is not, it's obviously going to be costing you like a huge, huge amount of money the scale and all the liquidity obviously is going to be very low so obviously when i'm looking at adani investing into an airport the liquidity is low he cannot just tomorrow go and sell off one airport to somebody else but there are investment vehicles like i told you infrastructure bonds so infrastructure bonds is a publicly traded invest instrument and that can be easily sold off but so when you're looking at it you can invest in infrastructure through etfs there are etfs and all we don't have so many in india but you have infrastructure related etfs and all you have municipal bonds which might be investing into you know those waste disposal and utilities and all provided in fact there was one of the cities in middle east it was in countries to iran iraq name another couple of qatar qatar i think it was qatar where one of the cities that they were planning so nowadays we have those new cities now where you're going to build an entire city from scratch with them ultra tech and everything. So one of these cities, they were planning to list it on the exchange. So whatever is the revenue from the city, so city will also have a lot of tax revenue, now, property tax and all. So road tax, a lot of taxes are collected by the city also. So you build that infrastructure and whatever will be the tax collections and everything that is going to be used to provide returns. There was one of the cities which got listed or was planning to get listed. I don't remember. I think it was two years back article I had read. So anyway, this is giving an example, right? So it's very interesting. So you have infrastructure investment trust also, but they will not be very liquid, but infrastructure investment trust is similar to you have your REITs, real estate investment trust. It's similar to that. So that is there. We don't have, I don't think we have an invite in India right now. Uh, <clears throat> even if we do, we don't have it like very liquid, tradable kinds. It's more of relatively bulkier investment. Of course, not a thousand crore for an airport, but maybe 50 lakh, one lakh. I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Uh, Invit, I was talking to one of these guys who was working in Invit. I'll check with him. Mutual funds are also there. But again, uh, uh, <clears throat> there are specific funds nowadays catering to, to, to infrastructure related. So there could be a debt fund which is investing heavily into infrastructure related debt and bonds. So there could be a mutual fund which is focusing on the infrastructure debt side. So that will be liquid master uh, limited partnership. So you have your MLPs and all. So we will study there are different ways in which you can structure your uh, PE funds and all of that. So you have your master limited partnerships. So LLP is basically limited liability partnership. What happens is there is a group of people who bring a huge amount of investment and there's a general partner who's going to be managing those investments, right? There'll be a partner who's a managing partner kinds and there are people who are bringing in investments. So we have these kind of limited partnerships right so partnership firm but the liability is limited so those structures are there we have private equity fund and all which might be investing into infrastructure specifically so we can have these different modes publicly traded vehicles are also there but very limited very very limited publicly traded vehicles infrastructure bonds and all barely <coughs> we'll have we'll have liquid uh, securities into it yeah you can of course take exposure into infrastructure by investing in equity linked to infrastructure like an adani port so you can buy those companies which are heavily GMR infra. You can invest into the infrastructure through equity uh, also, which is dealing into these kind of areas, Larson and Tubro. Right. <clears throat> Why would an investor want to invest into uh, infrastructure and all? Primarily because of diversification, because one, it is long term, it is illiquid and uh, it is a low liquidity I've told you. Nah, huh? It is long term, less liquid, bulky investment. Then why would you want to invest for diversification so that the correlation is low and my sharp ratio gets maximized so i hope you've done sharp ratio so that is that is the ultimate objective over here the next is what are the different kinds of risks in what are the different kinds of risks involved so one is there is a lot of regulatory risk because airports ports telecom Everything is going to be very, very heavily regulated because it's a common public that is using it on day to day basis. You can't say I've constructed this highway and now I will not allow anybody to go, uh, uh, use the highway or use the flyover or something. You can never do that. You cannot discriminate. Right. And if the government issues regulation that no, the speed limit has to be 60, you can't say Mera highway hai, I'm going to be driving it at this speed. <clears throat> 
वॉट वॉज दैट चाचा विधायक हैं आपके इट्स नॉट वन ऑफ वर्क ऑन दीज हाईवे एंड ऑल दीज इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड ऑल देन यू सो रेगुलेटरी रिस्क इज वेरी हाई द रिस्क दैट द रेगुलेशन कम्स अप वे योर यू आर एक्सपेक्टिंग अ सर्टन काइंड ऑफ कैश लॉन द गवर्मेंट हैज कैप्ट द काइंड ऑफ मनी यू कैन चार्ज फॉर एयरपोर्ट or port or whatever so in that case you are expected your cash flows your entire projections go wrong and maybe you made a mistake investing or maybe your investment does not seem to be viable right now it could be a major loss financial leverage because of a huge amount of investment that is required into infrastructure because of that the infrastructure investments and all generally take a good amount of loan there is a good amount of debt spending there is a financial leverage aspect debt magnifies both profits and losses we do this in equity we study these things in fr and equity and all that debt is going to be magnifying your profits and losses both <coughs> financial leverage is covered ratios and all we do it direct, uh, in detail your cash flows your actual cash flows may turn out to be less than the expected cash flows you are assuming that we'll have this much amount of footfall uh, at the airports but maybe the footfall is low for example the expected cash flows totally gone for a toss when you're looking at uh, uh, 2020 21 22 with respect to the covid situation construction risk is there if you're constructing the asset you're not buying an already constructed airport but if you're constructing an asset from scratch say for example you took a uh, uh, what do you call it uh, um the are you not loan yeah you took the tender and you took the uh, um, tender for you got the contract for uh, constructing bullet train and acquire or metro rail metro shade and all in let's say maharashtra and then some bollywood idiots started talking nonsense because they were paid or because they were politically motivated about and suddenly they had all their uh, climate activism activated although they are the ones who forget it pollute the environment the most so you know these people they will have save animals and then next day they are posting non vegetarian food and then one day they are having asthma attack next day they are bursting crackers on their marriages one day they're talking about environment and the next day kohli is traveling in his private jet and you understand the amount of pollution that causes so so those risks are there so construction risk your construction gets halted because some people plan to do selective activism next is operational risk so when you're having that operate direct uh, what do you call it lease and directly operate so when you have this directly operate that i'm going to be running it there are a lot of operational risks and all so um operational risk lot of health safety related operational risk suppose i am responsible for managing the flyover at vidya sagar setu so the howra fly uh, bridge <coughs> there is a toll that you collect what if that bridge falls down some day while operating or what if there is a what do you call it a disaster man made disaster the bowling is to to what will i say in, in bengal to you know the number of flyovers that have fallen so we have lot of operational risk and all so you'll have to figure out these things so these are the risks that you'll have when you're investing into infrastructure assets right comfortable